Hi everybody, it is already the 4th of January 2019. All right, seems like it's going fast. I want you to take a look at, well, this is that storm that I showed you last night that was about a thousand miles long starting in the Gulf and it just was going up the East Coast. Well, I guess they chopped the northern the northern part off and well I don't know I guess decided to move it over here you know in Arkansas and Oklahoma what are we looking at the jet stream is going east and west uh, I actually thought when I first saw this, and I've seen this often now, I'm like, what the hell is the jet stream doing? And don't you wish that when you had those questions and you knew someone who could answer them for you, don't you wish that they were just, you know, you could pull them from the corner of your, your home and ask them the question, they answer it, and you go, okay, go, go back to that corner and wait because I'm going to have more questions. That's what I was thinking earlier. I thought, Mike Morales, where are you when I need you? All right, I emailed him. I'll get an answer. But it looks like the jet stream is split. And, well, you got a jet stream going west and also then down south, the circular pattern, and this jet stream going to the east. All right, well... That's not the only weirdness that we are looking at. And I do hope that it's weirdness. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, you know, even now, the obvious, I very often doubt myself and I need, you know, feedback from someone else. Our reality is getting so friggin' warped. Yeah, and, and we're constantly confronted with people who are telling us that, oh, no, your reality is wrong. Our reality is right. Well, when you get that over and over and over again, you begin to kind of doubt your own self. That's not a good effect. But Mike Morales, I emailed him. He'll, he'll eventually answer. But what are we seeing here? All day. This has not moved all day. It has been held in place. As you can see, no, Mother Nature does not work in very defined lines and squares off. Uh, she works in a circular pattern. And you know what? She's not, she doesn't hold herself in place. She just keeps moving. All right, this hasn't moved. So you guys, uh, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, are you getting pummeled? Tennessee, are you getting flash flooding? What's happening? I have to tell you, again, another gray, cloudy day, rain off and on, upstate South Carolina. What do I hear from a neighbor who came to give me her key because I watch her cats? Um, she said, I'm getting really depressed. Not a surprise to hear that because of the weather. She said, I really hope that we get sun soon. Well, when man is causing this, we're left, you know, to the whim of man, not Mother Nature. So what is happening here? You see they are blowing apart the precipitation here in Oklahoma. with the use of frequencies. It's falling apart. Um, all right. I'm going to be doing what may just be a document dump. I will link below to everything. The biological effects of radar. Radar. As well as extremely low frequencies. Because when you see this, very often what they do is they use the Nexrad Doppler radar stations 
they're using a lot of microwaves lately as you can see the microwaves right here so I can't slow this down but you see the ripples in the precipitation the blue right here in Tennessee these microwaves they can use the microwaves for atmospheric heating but do you see this uh, what appears to be like a circular pattern right here and right here and it intersects with this right here that's the signature of the high frequency heating coming from our Doppler radar stations the high frequency heating where they shoot powerful high frequencies up into the ionosphere modulated with the extremely low frequencies and voila they can control they can create they can intensify they can modify they can manipulate weather fronts well earlier and I thought I'd saved the capture but I didn't the Doppler radar signatures the next rad harp rings were quite they were far more visible but once you begin to see and you know what you're looking for these patterns these signatures you can see them you can spot them very easily so for those of you who leave the comments I don't know what you're seeing I don't know what are you talking about um, uh, look, I have playlists, uh, weather modification, and on the playlist, you will see videos explaining the next red harp rings. Um, but yes, okay, so what could you, you see the microwaves, you see the next red harp rings, and they're intersecting. And you see that this, this whole storm has been held in place pretty much all day all day you see how nicely defined the storm is um, and if you if you look more closely you will see more Nexrad harp signatures but I don't want to waste any more time high frequency heating what do we have? High frequency heating right here in Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi. Where are the microwaves? Tennessee. And these, there are times when you can see the full next red harp ring. And there are times when you can just catch uh, a little bit of the ring extend the ring throughout this entire area extend the ring to complete a perfect circle and then you'll get why this is turning red with a ripple effect microwaves this area is being heated and as you can see this storm still well it's gone a little bit further north it looks like they are really dissipating this portion of the storm that seems to be going west interesting that this we have everything going to the east except this little section here all right um, very dangerous very dangerous all life affected all life And the effects, long-term exposure to microwave radiation provoked cancer growth, evidences from radars, mobile communication systems. I'm not going to. I will link below to everything. I do want to read portions of this 
Article 1972, Navy is testing microwave risks. Wow, 1972? Well, there were an awful lot of military studies on the effects of microwaves, radar, which I'll get to, um, for decades. They know, they know the risks, they know the effects. And so even in 1972, we had journalists that were a little bit better than these mainstream media, you can't even call them investigative journalists, they're a joke. Um, we are the Soviet Union. We are no longer the United States with a free press. Our mainstream media is the propaganda arm of corporations and the United States government and military. They don't investigate, they just read. They're readers, they're not reporters anymore. But in 1972, well, either this journalist was lying or once again you have all of these journalists that just don't do the research to find out that much of um, the effects were already established but 50 volunteers to potentially harmful microwaves exposing 50 volunteers to find out what these mysterious rays do to the human body. An increasing number of Americans are bombarded daily by microwaves from ovens, TV transmitters, and other electronic equipment. 1972, we were already bombarded with dangerous frequencies. 2018. Wow. Well, depopulation agenda. The success of it? I'm going to do another video to show you the success. Uh, they are killing off life. Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers, Gwen Towers, Doppler radar stations, extremely low frequency transmitter sites, and, well, Gwen Towers are that. Um, the electronics, all, uh, all the modern electronics, uh, everything is emitting very dangerous frequencies. So, um, here, medical reports link the rays to cataracts, damaged male reproductive organs, cardiovascular changes, and even psychological problems. Except for cataracts, this journalist claims the health damage is uncertain and unexplored. Except for cataracts. Keep that in mind. You'll see the studies. Oh, way back when. Cataracts. Cataracts comes up. Cataracts. And guess what? It's irreversible. Cataracts is exponentially increasing in our country. Ain't that great? Um, and I will show you an article about that. But here, which is very interesting. The Soviets, for example, have set a limit 1,000 times smaller than the 10 millimeter or milliwatt per square centimeter permitted by our own Defense Department. Even the Soviet limit, however, is a million times greater than the natural background level of microwaves from the sun. Okay, so the Soviets were using a level that was extremely dangerous, but we're exceptional. We Americans, we're going to outdo the Soviets and use a level that's even more dangerous. So as the Navy volunteers move on to other jobs, they continue their tests since microwave effects may show up years afterward. Genetic damage might not show up until the second generation. And that's what... Um, Oh my God, I can't. The, the British uh, microwave uh, specialist in, oh God, I can't even remember his name. Wow, okay, memory, all right? Memory is failing us. Oh, I can see his face and I can't think of his name, but that is what he was saying, that the effects 
will show up in generations to come. All right, um, let's see. Complicating this study is the Navy's enormous financial stake. If uh, the researcher or the head researcher of the study discovers the 10 milliwatt level is too lax, the Navy would have to spend millions modifying or replacing its vital microwave gear. And what does the Navy care? They're using our money. Um, here. Indeed, a previous Navy test was abruptly canceled when it began to show that monkeys under heavy microwave exposure were suffering frightening injury and illness. Every city is crisscrossed with these microwave beams. 1972. Every city is crisscrossed with these microwave beams. Can you imagine what it is now? Um, Representative John Moss, Democrat of California, has received disquieting reports that microwaves are causing eye problems among air traffic controllers. All right. Um, the effects of extremely low frequency magnetic fields on melatonin, cortisol, and these are two marker rhythms of the circadian system, cortisol, stress, uh, that's the uh, stress hormone, uh, melatonin, you need it to sleep, why are people experiencing exhaustion, insomnia, why is insomnia exponentially increasing in our population, and it's not just Americans, but it's in all populations that have a uh, a high concentration and saturation of microwave, which is pretty much every Western country. Um, exhausted, this article, you know, God, I read, I have to read the entire article because I want to see, are they mentioning Wi-Fi? Are they mentioning the microwave saturation? They don't. They don't. So, the chaos of life and its collision with technology but not the collision with the microwaves, the collision with using and being on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, uh, the overload of information. Yes, it's draining us. We're frazzled. We're emotionally overrun. We're exhausted. What's to blame? The list is long. Growing, experts say. Wildfires, terror attacks, rising tensions with North Korea, Racist rallies, political investigations in Washington, nonstop barrage of presidential tweets, more and more mass shootings, a tsunami of sexual harassment accusations, role of Russians in our election, climate change, red state, blue state division, hurricanes, the worst on record. I don't know about you guys. None of that stresses me out. The overload of information doesn't even stress me out. I'm hardwired for this. I'm actually hard, hardwired for, well, traumatic headlines. I don't know. Um, but I've been doing this my entire adult life. And when you grow up, you know, with uh, in an environment that is traumatizing, you are hardwired, you know. So that is not affecting me. What affects me is the frequencies. And then dealing with people in my real life who are acting in ways that I cannot comprehend. Um, but to know that we're at war and then to deal in real life with all of these people who just don't care, that's a stressor. But what else is a stressor? The microwave frequencies. Doppler radar. When we see that. When we see the Doppler radar signatures. When we see the microwave signatures. When we see the extremely low frequency signatures. You can bet that, oh, life 
is not just now getting stressed. The stress has been intensified due to these extremely low frequencies because the saturation of the microwaves coming from the cell towers and the cell phones and Wi-Fi all over, your body is 24-7. These microwaves are a stressor. You may not feel the stress as it is, but it is a biological stressor. And as a biological stressor, well, that is one of the reasons why it uh, affects cortisol. But the melatonin, why do we have an increase of people buying sleep aids, doctors prescribing sleep aids? Because the melatonin is being depleted as you're sitting in your Wi-Fi environments. Um, your REM stage, that rapid eye movement, many people don't experience that stage any longer because this frequency disruption of your sleep patterns. That's why people are exhausted. This is why people wake up never feeling refreshed anymore. Um, and it's only going to get worse. But what are they also talking about here? Stress. I do see an increase in anxiety in my practice. And others are saying that, well, they're stressed. 63% of Americans, they are, they're very stressed about the future of the nation. Okay, if they're stressed and they know it because of everything that's going on, then add to that all of the frequencies that only cause more stress. Um, tissue destruction and death from microwave radiation. Human effects of infrasound, the, that's in the extremely low frequency range. Unpleasant experiences of pressure in the middle year are often men mentioned in connection with exposure to infrasound, extremely low frequencies, which I'm having pain in my left ear as I speak. Um, the effect can be explained as an increased vascular pressure in the middle ear due to overproduction of endolymph. The, it's a prerequisite for annoyance, disturbance effects, diffuse unpleasantness, reduced ability to concentrate, etc. Uh, the exposure level is above the level of perception via the hearing, but studies have also shown an increased risk of drowsiness during exposure. Are you feeling drowsy? Infrasonic, infrasound, extremely low frequencies. The threshold levels of physiological effects, one of them, reduction in wakefulness. Wakefulness. So as, as you're driving around this area of Washington and also a little bit into Idaho here and into Canada, when you're driving, reduction of wakefulness, reduction of alertness, is this why we see so many accidents? I see an awful lot of accidents here, that's for sure. Um, th look, these frequencies are having a profound effect all over the world. But in countries that have the levels off the charts, as we do here in the United States, the effect is truly catastrophic. Cataracts clouding vision of millions of Americans number grown each year. The number of Americans suffering from cataracts is rapidly increasing with each decade. The disease, which slowly robs an individual of clear vision, is expected to affect 38 million by 2030, 50 million by 2050. I think the numbers are low. Targeting the brain with sound waves. Low frequency, low intensity, ultrasound. 
deep brain stimulation and vagus nerve stimulation, which are used to treat a growing number of neurological disorders. What have they found with this technology? They can control activity in the brain from outside the body, now allowing scientists to apply ultrasound to control the brain. Ultrasound. That's a word that everybody knows, right? Pregnant women go to get an ultrasound. Um, and we consider it just this medical test, not dangerous at all. Ultrasonic. Sonic. Replace ultrasound with ultrasonic, extremely low frequencies, sonic weapons to control the brain. That's when you get that this is a weapon. But of course, they always present it as oh, we're going to cure Parkinson's, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Well, you put this kind of technology into the hands of sick, evil people, and they will use it for their own nefarious purposes. Military and government reports. I will link below to all of these military and government reports showing that the effects, myriad, varied, dangerous. All right. Um, I'm doing this now because I don't want to have to do it again. The effects of radar on the human body. And when was this? Do I have a date on this? I think it was, I want to say the 50s, but decades ago. Decades ago. And this date, which I guess if you blow this up, you can get to the date, is the date, I believe, that it was declassified. So, what do we have on radar? The increasing use of radar and other microwave generating equipment by the military services. Well, got to find out what the effect of these frequencies are on the human body. And in fact, there is a manual, the U.S. Army Microwave Radiation Hazards are outlined in Hazards to Health from Microwave Energy. And both radar and communication systems may produce hazardous electromagnetic power densities characterized by pulsed operation and scanning antenna beams. Some of these radars produce such a strong field that if they were not rotating, the power densities might be hazardous to a distance of 500 feet or more. Relatively low frequency electromagnetic fields generated sonic and ultrasonic oscillations in living organisms. Their cells deteriorated. When you hear ultrasonic or sonic, think weapon. Think of our embassy personnel in Cuba or the uh, American in China who, well, all of them came down with all of these effects that already have been uh, documented by studies all of the effects that they had the sonic weapons being used against them well sonic weapons are being used against us as well you can think of this as a sonic weapon when you see these very defined lines shooting out you know that extremely low frequencies are being used and sonic weapons are 
in that range. So they know that cells deteriorate. Um, let's see, the most common complaints, headache, fatigue, um, perspiring, dizziness, menstrual disorders, irritability, agitation, tension, drowsiness, sleeplessness, depression, anxiety, forgetfulness, lack of concentration. Uh, other problems of measuring human radiation, well, they do also talk about what I talked about last night, another study, that they're talking about how much fat somebody has, size of the body, uh, that these effects are not uniform. One could feel the effects sitting right next to somebody else and they don't feel the effects and that is very, very important to get out because a lot of people are judging people as hypochondriacs or you're crazy and you know this is psychosomatic. No, they have to understand that these frequencies, there's a lot of factors that are in play as to why somebody is affected and the other person is not. Um, here, this article, May 1957, issue of the magazine California Medicine tissue destruction and death from microwave radiation, which was that study that I showed you earlier. The article was a case report on the death of a man who stood in the direct beam of a radar transmitter. In a few seconds, the man had a sensation of heat. The heat became intolerable in less than a minute, and he moved away from the antenna. LRAD, active denial system, 5G millimeter wave, Okay, um, within 30 minutes, he had acute abdominal pain and vomiting. He died within 10 days from inflammation of the intestines attributed to the destructive heat generated by the radio, the, the radar beam, sorry. Um, so they can kill people with this. An Italian physician uh, Casa Melli performed some experiments with human brains exposed to the field of a relatively powerful radio transmitter in the 1920s, and he observed changes in brain wave patterns. He could produce hallucinations, but only in highly suggestible people. Uh, behavior of subjects during exposure. There was a New York Times article um, that was about the U.S. Navy using non-lethal weapons. They talking about the research of our Navy into non-lethal weapons. They were looking to paralyze, paralyze enemy personnel. Well, these were the studies on animals and they used dogs and monkeys and rabbits and um, they were able to get the animal aroused or drowsy. The drowsy periods, they could extend to getting that animal motionless. And they, the animal would keep their body in a fixed position, paralyzed. They could um, cause a wide fixed gaze where, and I'm not sure, I, I believe this is the monkey experiment, experiments. These monkeys were tortured. All right. Uh, they would get the monkeys to stare with a wide fixed gaze. And they were brought to agitation. They would move their head rapidly side to side. Um, movements that would stop abruptly. The animal would then be quiet and unresponsive to touch, pain, light, to sound, stimuli. And they could alternate switching the transmitter on and off. And the animals were brought to the point of successive arousal and complete relaxation in a 20 second cycle, reacting like a puppet on the end of string. Think about the targeted individuals. 
uh, General Electric, Electric Advanced Electronic Center. Uh, well, their researchers found the human auditory system was affected. Tinnitus. Buzzing, knocking sound. Um, interesting here, when the lower half of the head was covered, including the maxillary dental area, the radio frequency sound could be perceived. When the top half of the head was covered, the radio frequency sound ceased. Fillings in the teeth were not implicated. Have you ever experienced sharp pain in your teeth? Do you have mercury fillings? Um, okay, irradiation of the head of the monkey. So they had this antenna which they pointed toward the monkey's head in line with his brain stem, the central vital portion of the brain. The antenna was excited with an ultra-high frequency transmitter. And what were they able to do to this monkey? Well, it became drowsy, became agitated, moving its head from side to side. Unmistakable signs of some impending disturbance in the vital centers of the brain. It was thrown into a major convulsion in a few seconds before death occurred. Now, examination of the brains of the 10 monkeys that died revealed no pathological cause of death. This is a great way to kill people and you go for an autopsy, nothing can be detected. Another 10 monkeys whose exposure was cut short of death showed symptoms of Parkinson's. I can't, I, look, even these experiments with animals, I'm, all right. Well, what they were able to do, arousal, drowsiness, motionless, whole body in a fixed position, agitation, stare with a wide fixed gaze, uh, movements that would cease abruptly, they would be quiet, unresponsive to any kind of stimuli. Um, they could alternate their arousal, their drowsiness. They could make them move about in a chair, alternating, switching the transmitter on and off. Yep, they were brought to arousal, relaxation, reacting like a puppet on the string. Understand why I'm reading this again targeted individuals who have claimed that their limbs move without they moving them. There's an awful lot of targeted individuals who experience involuntary movement and it's beyond their control. A lot of people talk about being put to sleep or brought to, you know, these, um, they have this successive alternation of feelings within them. We've got to stop judging people just because we don't have the experience. We have to start listening. Okay, eye signs, sagging upper eyelids of both eyes with the continued exposure. Um, suddenly this monkey would open his eyes, stare upward, eyes would begin to move independently, pupils would dilate. Some instances it would lose its roundness, rapid involuntary oscillation of the eyeballs, vertigo, accompanied by rapid blinking, involuntary isolation of the eyeballs, often persisted for several minutes after cessation of radiation. The skin of the face flushed, pale, the nose became pink, uh, the respiratory rate increased, salivation um, was observed, rapid blinking, clonic movements of the eye, bilateral clonic movements, facial mus muscles, 
severe grimace, grimace, pulled back the lips from the teeth, clonic flexion of the neck, symmetrical clonic movements of the upper extremities, trunk, lower extremities, seizure. Paralysis of all four limbs. Two animals developed that. Two others, weakness of upper extremities. Inability to coordinate voluntary muscular movements. Develop lesions on of the occipital muscles and overlying skin. One animal developed a right facial weakness, Bell's palsy. They can increase the temperature of your head, your brain, signs of intoxication. Uh, these were experiments with rats. Obvious signs of microwave effects were observed in the rats. Uh, immediately aware of some type of pain stimulus and tried to move to avoid it, squealing, struggling for 15-25 seconds. The ears turned dark in color. They had first, second, and third degree burns on their skin. Uh, the most conspicuous effect was stimulation of the central nervous system with muscle spasms, tremors, chronic convulsions. Their tail stood up almost straight. They had periods of central stimulation alternated with periods of depression. Can you not control a being with frequencies? <laughs> they can do whatever it is that they so want to do. All right, the eye and the testes. You guys, your testes and everybody's eye, the most sensitive to these frequencies. And yeah, experiments on the testes of dogs. Um, well, I will link below to this and you can find out uh, damage to the pituitary gland, damage to the testicular inter stacial tissue, failure of the tissue to fully respond to the hormone being elaborated, the radiation of the eye. Eye is particularly susceptible to damage from microwave radiation. Fluid contained in the eyeball reacts to heat as the white of an egg. It becomes opaque and the process is irreversible. Crystalline lens of the eye has been shown to be peculiarly susceptible to the effects of radiated energy, whether ionizing, infrared, or radio frequency, all of which causes cataracts. And they have known this for a long time. The Defense Intelligence Agency, 1976, biological effects of electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, microwaves. Uh, this was translated. It was from the uh, Eurasian communist countries, their research, and yep, a whole lot of health concerns. Much concern has arisen about extremely low frequencies that we now are being pummeled with. The studies have suggested possible adverse effects on human health, cancer, reproduction, and uh, there's a similarity between microwave irradiation and drugs regarding their effects on biological systems. How many times have I posted videos saying I wake up feeling drugged and it can last for hours. I can't function. I feel like I'm drugged. The effects of microwaves on brain tissue, chemistry, functions, and functions are complex and selective. Body weight, yes, it has a lot to do with it, um, but here. Um, they can decrease aggressive behavior, decrease motor activity, or they can increase the mobility and aggression of animals. And we are animals. 
uh, they found deficits in spatial memory function. A uh, similar type of effect was observed with exposure to a resonance-tuned, extremely low-frequency magnetic field. Thus, the database is replete with phenomenological observations of biological systems affected by exposure. Actual or potential effects of extremely low frequency and radio frequency microwave radiation on enhancing violence and homicide and accelerating agents uh, aging, accelerating aging of human, animal, and plant cells. Do you feel like you're aging rapidly? Microwave effects include cataract formation, fetal abnormalities, decreased thyroid function, suppression of behavioral responses, gonadinal function, and natur natural killer cell activity. Those cells, the killer cells that kill cancer at non-thermal levels, stimulation of thyroid, increased susceptibility of the organism to bacterial infections, decline in neutrophil, neutrophil and complement activity, increased lipho, lipoblastoid transformation of lymphocytes, lymphocytes, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, abnormalities in other sites, pre Cursors in bone marrow in are some of the reported effects. So, it's not just the microwaves coming from your cell phone or the microwaves coming from your smart meter and your Wi-Fi and all of the other electronic gadgets that people use. It's not just the frequencies coming from your screens, TV, computer, cell phones. The extremely low frequencies that we have been seeing, that I have posted videos on. Um, regions of the country getting pummeled with, well, Houston, you have a problem because it's kind of calm tonight, but this whole area, and it's not just Houston. You know, I, I think it's coming from um, Galveston, but, well, I showed you the frequencies. Was it last night or two nights ago? Being set off in South Carolina and Georgia. Um, They are using this as a weapon. It is absolutely part of their uh, depopulation agenda that has been ongoing and ramped up. But when you think about uh, the extremely low frequencies, the effect, the psychological effect, the uh, ability to actually control motor activity, aggression, anger, agitation. Think of the video that I posted earlier. When you have, you know, all of these people, suddenly you have this eruption of violence, hundreds of people. Yeah. We still think the day is going to come when they're going to be con controlling every aspect of our life. They already are. They already are. All right. Any of you know about the jet stream? Doesn't it look like it's split in two here? East, west. All right. I had to do all of this. I'm sorry that my videos are so long, but I, I didn't want to do two, three, four videos. I just wanted to get the links out there, get the documents out there, and really emphasize we are so saturated in dangerous frequencies now. 
there is a reason why an awful lot of us are going down. That is the reality. All links are below.